there, Stampers, and welcome to my Tuesday at 2. It's Candy here from SweetStamper.com with your weekly Tuesday at 2-ish. Um, I get here at 2 or thereabouts to do some live TV with you, and I've got an awesome demonstration for you today, um, highlighting some of the brand new um, celebration free rewards that you can get with a $50 or $100 order through the end of the month. So I'll give it just a couple of minutes here for people to gather because I know that I'm a bit behind. Um, I got a little bit of show and tell for you before we start stamping. That's kind of what I usually do. I usually start with show and tell and then we move on to a demonstration. So I hope that you are having a good day. It is spring break. Hey, Marlene, I'm glad you're here. Here in San Antonio, it is spring break for the kids. So lots of our folks are out of town and um, people that are camping and traveling, you know, in spite of coronavirus, um, well, scares and, um, you know, it's a reality, but, um, well, yeah, I won't comment on that. Hi, hi, Gail, I'm glad you're here. But people are still living their lives, and um, thank God. Um, I'm grateful that people are still moving around and, and going places and not just staying in. Uh, hi, darling, not just remaining inside and, and being in fear. So I'm grateful for that. And uh, But I will say... <laughs> that um, you can stamp whether you're inside or outside. The weather's so pretty right now here in San Antonio. So um, yeah, you I have in the past, I don't have a large enough table on my patio right now, but I have in the past um, done some stamping outside. You have to be a little bit mindful if you have a lot of trees in your backyard that you don't get little stuff coming down into your ink pads. Um, but yeah, you can, especially I think when you're, uh, if you're camping or something, um, our paper pumpkin kits are a great way to go with that. Speaking of paper pumpkin kits, today is the last day. Um, technically it was, technically today is the last day that you can sign up for paper pumpkin for this month. I always like to do it the day before the last day, even though I'm a last minute Lucy, when it comes to placing an order for something. I don't like to get it that close to the mark because I'm afraid I'm going to miss out on whatever it is that I'm getting. So, okay, without further ado, I think I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera down and um, show you what we're going to, we're going to do a little bit of show and tell first, and then we'll do some stamping. So here we go. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. You can see my full basket of stamping goodies that I'm going to be using. Okay, so let me move up a little bit so you can I can get into the camera a little better. Okay, so what I wanted to start with was just showing you um, I was working on thank you cards um, with Darlene yesterday. Monday is the day that Darlene, my assistant, comes and we work a really full day on Mondays and I needed to get a bunch of thank you cards out for customers and people who'd been to my retreat. And you know, I've been so in love with this paper. This is the um, Lily Impressions designer paper that you can get free with a $50 order. Let me grab one more card to show you. Um, I ended up using that paper last week on, I think I did this card with you guys last week. I'm pretty sure I did. I, this is what this paper looks like when you die cut it. And I think it's just really gorgeous. So I ended up using this for my swap for my Southern Sweet Stampers um, demonstrator meeting this month. Because I just, I love the way this paper is just transformed when you die cut it. Having said that, I love it when it's just, it looks like a painted canvas to me. So all that to say, I had bits and pieces of this paper that I wanted to use and kind of scraps of ribbon. And so you see how it really, hi Monica, this same paper, let me grab a couple of them that are the same. Um, so this paper on a balmy blue background looks one way. And then here it is with the balmy blue and then a little bit of lovely lipstick ribbon. But look at the same paper on 
purple posy background with a little bit of soft sea, um, I, I can't think of the name of it, not soft sea foam. You know, it's that other new end color. Darlene will tell me in a minute here. <laughs> but you see what different looks you can get with the same paper just based on putting a different uh, background behind it, a different card base behind it. I think it's, I, I love the versatility of this paper. You know, just a simple greeting and a little bit of ribbon and you are there. Very quick and easy, very very pretty, and I think that, you know, this is just, there's a real elegance to it, but this particular design on, on this, in this set of papers, to me, um, Seaside Spray, thank you, Darlene, um, to me looks very, it's kind of um, Monet um, impressionist painting meets uh, modern art with some of the some of the swashes of color and such. I think this would really be a great card for a young person as well as a senior like me. <laughs> Here's another paper in the series. And again, just, you know, a simple background. And then here's a couple of other, you can see where I just had different offcuts. Some of them were at horizontal, some of them were at vertical. And um, so this one we paired with, um, this is Rococo Rose. And here I paired a different piece of the paper with um, petal pink and just kind of I had bits and pieces of this lovely lipstick ribbon I think it goes really nicely with these and then I did another um, I only did two versions of this but I also had some of these three by four panels of the same paper and um, I love 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 this greeting um, this is from the Rustic Retreat. Let me just grab the stamp set because you may be wondering where this greeting comes from. And this is actually a quote from, uh, this is a Christopher Robin quote from one of the Pooh Bear um, stories. And I just love it. I'm actually going to be using this on some cards for my grandchildren. So I think that you can take this greeting and use it on something rather simple and elegant like this, or doing, or doing something a little bit more whimsical like you would for grandkids. So here I did a little bit of a ribbon bow, uh, not a ribbon, a twine bow. And here I didn't do a twine bow. Both times I used a few of the rhinestones. Yeah, Marlene, if you love this paper like I do, yeah, I'm glad you have a package, but it is just so versatile. And I think when paper is this gorgeous, it really, you just let it shine, let it do its work. But having said that, <laughs> I do love it when you die cut it with a really heavy, um, a heavy die cutting um, die. I want to do this same die, uh, this is springtime impressions die cuts. I wanted to also try this with the butterfly. I think it would be really pretty. Um, and then this stamp set here I'm going to be using again today. This is one of the second release celebration rewards that you can earn for free. So I did want to just show you really quickly. This is the stamp set that has this. This is actually, um, Marlene, yeah, you need another set of that paper. I understand totally. I love that Lily Impressions. One of my all-time favorite papers. Um, this is, I've done a lot with this Rustic Retreat. This is actually in our annual catalog. One of the things I love about it is it's incredible versatility because you have things that you can use year round. I mean, here in Texas, you know, this is a great, this is a great, uh, stamp for a guy card. Um, and the bear as well, this lovely cabin in the woods kind of look can be, you know, it doesn't have to just be for like winter or Christmas, but I love that you have a beautiful Christmas greeting. Look at this one. You always walk by my side. That's a beautiful sentiment. I so appreciate you. These are, are meant to go together, but I think they could stand alone. And then this is my absolute favorite greeting in here. And they do have underneath here that this is A.A. A. Milne who wrote this. And of course, A.A. A. Milne is the author of the Pooh Bear all the Winnie the Pooh books. So you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and loved more than you know. Like I said, I think this goes for grandkids, husbands, team members, sisters, somebody going through cancer, some, you know, just there's so many applications for this greeting. And then there's this lovely branch. So anyway, Rustic Retreat wasn't really what I was trying to that you can get 
with um, Rustic Retreat. So I'm hoping, I'm getting kind of a little notice from Facebook. I'm hoping I haven't um, cycled out from that my, what do you call it, the, um, my connection was unstable for a couple of minutes. Okay, let me move on to today's share, and that is I'm showcasing this set of designer papers, which is called Flowering Foils, and it is available free right now through the end of the month with a $50 order. And you can see all the shimmer and shine here. There's four different designs of the paper. You get three sheets of each. And the paper I'm going to be using today is this one. And Hi, Jana. I'm glad you're here. And it has a combination of copper and silver foiling. Um, this piece here, I might play with this one next week with y'all, because I think this goes for a lot of things. This is copper foiling, which copper tends to be my favorite kind of foil. Although champagne makes, uh, is making a real, um, is really competing with my love for copper. Um, but I think this makes a great guy card, but I think it could go in a lot of different directions. Um, I like the real modern look of this one where, um, this, rose one is more of just a classic look but a little touch of modernity with it and then this one again is quite modern all silver very uh, graphic looking and then this one is a little bit more of uh, kind of a soft and sweet and again pairing silver with copper which I think is a really unique look I haven't I haven't seen that I do like mixing my metals um you know, when I was growing up, you always, if you were wearing silver jewelry, you wore silver jewelry. You didn't wear silver and gold. But nowadays, you know, we, we mix things up a little bit. So let me show you where we're going to stamp today and where we're going to go. So this is the stamp set that I am sharing with you today. This is called Tags and Bloom. It is a it is free with celebration, but it's free with a $100 order, and I will show you why. There are actually, oh, they're not in here. They must be over on... <laughs> Let me see if they're on my stamping station over here. I was stamping with them. Ay, ay, ay. Where did I put them? They might be in the basket here. There are two full sets of stamps, which shall appear at some point during this video today. There are two full sets of stamps, which is why it is available with a $100 order. Um, I wanted to point out, this is the. Um, I'm using this particular punch today. Hi, Kathy. I'm glad you're here. I'm using this um, Label Me Lovely punch today. It also coordinates with this punch, which is available as well in the um, mini catalog. So the Label Me Lovely punch and this one, which I can't recall the name of it, are both available in the mini catalog. So let me put that aside and let me show you where we're gonna go. And then I got one more show and tell thing to show you. Okay, so here is my card for you today. And so you can see where I've taken the foil paper. And th for this one, I'm using some blends to color it in. And just made a very elegant card um, with these beautiful, beautiful flowers. And really kind of keying in on the purple. So this is, um, this is Highland Heather. And then this under here is Purple Posy. And that is what I actually did the most of my coloring with. So let me show you where we're gonna go. Here are the basic elements that I'm using. This is Highland Heather. And look how beautiful it goes with Purple Posy. And then that is going to be our piece there. And um, let me see, I was gonna show you a couple of other things. I decided to use one, uh, just a piece of a pearlized doily. But I will say, I have a whole container full of doilies because some of y'all, I have been known as the doily queen. I love, love, love working with doilies on our cards and I tend to collect all the different doilies. And um, these pearlized doilies, I think have been a little bit harder to work with. Hi, Mary, I'm glad you're here. In my opinion, they've been a little bit harder to work with because they have these very um, kind of large edges where I typically like something that is a little bit more delicate on the edges. Hi, Elda. So um, I did want to point out to you, and we're going to kind of um, play with this a little bit while I'm stamping with you today, let you guys make some choices with me, um, that... 
on these pearlized doilies, which are in our annual catalog, I wanted to point out that these doilies here, which come in three colors, these are actually from last year, they are retired. However, uh, they are still in our um, clearance rack, at least they were a week ago. I didn't check today, I should have. Uh, but they're available for like, I don't know, $3 or something, they're a steal, um, $2 and something. They may be gone, but look how that would look with my combination. So I didn't think about this till afterwards. So I might work with that one this time. And look how even when you turn it over um, and you get that white on there, it really is just a different look, although the color is peeking through. It's not as crisp a white as when you're using the, um, the pearlized doily. So let me just kind of show you the difference there. So you can see how really white that is. Now, let me show you a couple of other things and then we're gonna start, I'm gonna start coloring with you. This is the ribbon that I chose to use. This is Purple Posy, um, I think it's called Burlap Trim or something like, Scalloped Linen Ribbon. It's not, it's finer than burlap, it's linen. Uh, this is what I used here. And one of the reasons I, when you're designing something and you have all of this really, really gorgeous colors and all of this foiling, you don't then want to put a really bold ribbon here. And I wanted something that would keep this as the focal point. And I found that this little piece of linen ribbon was just a ticket to do that. So it is, I will say that this ribbon I find because it's rather thick, um, it doesn't tie overly well, in my opinion, so I tend to like to use it more as, you know, just an accent going across like so. Okay, I need to quit jabbering and start coloring. <laughs> um, these are the blends that I used, and the beautiful thing about using the blends with this flowering foils paper is that the foil resists the color, so you really don't even have to stay in the lines very much. Okay, let me put this aside. And the color scheme that I'm going with is Purple Posy, and we have, although we don't have Purple Posy ink pad, we have Purple Posy blends. And, um, we have the light and the dark. I did use just a tiny bit of Blackberry Bliss on my um, on my little buds. Now, one of the things you want to do when you get ready to color this is to recognize that this is going to go in here, and I want to see which colors I want at the front. So you see, to me. Yeah, that almost looks like that flower's upside down, so I don't really care for that. I'm gonna do it this way, but I am also wanna make sure that I have my pink flower down here to contrast with my bit of purple here. So I'm gonna put make this flower purple up here and this one pink. Now, something that I did this time that I haven't done before, and I'm gonna try to get you a little bit closer without knocking this over to see if you could get a little better view. Um, something that I, nor I did, did do this time that I don't normally do and I, and I like it is typically when I am working with blends, I will outline with the, the fine tip in the darker color. But this time I wanted a darker outline. So I used the brush tip to do just inside the the um well the outline of the flower and i found that it gave a bolder outline and more of the dark of this flirty flamingo um which i felt gave a little bit more definition to my flower because i've got pretty soft colors here they're kind of soft and springy and I wanted to make sure that things didn't look too much all the same. So that is what I'm gonna do there. And I do find that if you will just push this down like so until you hear the snap, it's really the easiest way to, um, 
to close up your blends. And then I just went over like so. Now you can see that this does not blend out quite as well as it does on Whisper White paper because this is not, this paper here is not the same as our Whisper White, but I like this. I like the kind of the contrast. And so that's actually what I was going for was to get that almost two, you know, a little bit more of a two-tone contrasting look than what I typically do where I blend these colors out a lot more. And like I said, it's just the nature of this paper does not blend the same way that our Whisper White. Our Whisper White cardstock by Stampin' Up is a really unique cardstock and it's really made for blending and for holding ink and it's just the best. Okay, so that is that one there. Actually, I think I'm gonna do this one up here as well. Um, so this one's gonna be right up at the top of my card and I'm gonna do it the same way. And you know, I don't very often do this where I'm coloring on camera with you guys just because it takes some time. But I figured that we would just go with it today. It's spring break week, kind of relaxing, coloring, big girl coloring. You know, most of us loved coloring as kids, and we just keep doing it as adults. Now, when it comes to the leaves, one of the things I like about this design is all the leaves are in silver, and all the flowers are in copper. So that makes it really easy to figure out where you're supposed to color. And I am just using the dark um, soft sea foam. I did try working with the two colors together, the light and the dark, and to be honest, there just wasn't that much of a definition or a difference between them on this. And so I opted just to go with the dark. Like I said, usually I'm, I like to outline with the dark and then fill in with the light. But on this one, it just, I, maybe because these leaves are quite small, there wasn't enough difference in the two images to make it worth using both um, both colors for me. Now, I did decide kind of after the fact that I like having the green in the center of my flowers. It gives a little bit of contrast. And you can see how I'm just kind of really kind of messy coloring, but it the... Um, the foiling helps me to stay in the lines when I'm really not staying in the lines because it resists the ink. So there are my very cool colors um, in the sense that, you know, soft sea foam is a very cool green. And I think that's balancing my very warm pink right there. Um, I opted to use the fine tip of the Blackberry Bliss. I wanted these buds to really, really stand out. Because again, I've got these kind of soft, springy colors. And one of the things I like in my designs, and I feel is a very important element of design, is you have to have some contrast or everything kind of looks the same. And if you have a little bit of contrast, it causes everything to pop. And I felt that the, the little buds here would be really nice in Blackberry Bliss. And I believe this is light Blackberry Bliss because the dark one is really, really dark and inky. And I thought that was too dark. Now I missed a leaf over here, so I gotta come back and color that in. I don't want that white space there. Now, if you wanted to, you could color the background in a soft blue or something to make it look like sky. But I just didn't really feel like that was something I needed to do here. It was a little bit too much. I think to me, it would be too much color. So I liked having, um, I liked having my flowers be the strongest color here. And then to me, the uh, soft seafoam green really just kind of offsets everything and kind of almost frames it so that um, it just kind of enhances it and helps the colors of my flowers to really stand out. So there's my dark, and again, you know, I usually outline with the finer tip, but I kind of like the look that I'm getting with this heavier outline of the dark um, blend and then coming back in here. Now I will say this is the Purple Posy and there's not as much difference. These 
tones of blends don't have quite as high of a contrast between the light and dark as the flirty flamingo ones. And you'll just find that within some of the blends have a bigger difference between light and dark than others. But there is still, you know, some are almost like light to dark and some of them are almost medium to dark. So I'm pretty happy with the way that is looking. I'll come back here and do, just fill that in. So really, you know, for having said I don't like to color on camera because I think it takes too long and I don't want to bore you guys, that didn't take long at all. And the I think the result is really lovely. So what I will do next is I am going to layer that onto my piece of Purple Posy. Now, did I bring over here something I was going to just show you? Hmm, I don't think I did. Let me see if I can grab it really quickly and easily just to kind of show you something here. Oh, here we go. I was kind of playing around with the colors and I did decide to do it like this. But look what happens if you put this on the flirty flamingo. It's almost, you know, it brings out the pink where this is bringing out the purple. So, you know, when you're doing something like this, you, you choose which colors you really want to highlight. Okay, let me find my snail. Here we go. So I am going to layer this onto my purple posy panel. And I want to make sure yeah, that my... Flirty Flamingo Flower is going to be towards the bottom of the card. And then, hey, Rosie, I'm glad you're here as well. Now, here we go with another color choice that we could do. Um, I have a bone folder somewhere. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Aye, aye. Well, let's see. I'm not finding. Oh, right in front of me. Duh. <laughs> Somebody's probably yelling at the camera about now. Um, this is my original here. I could change it up a little bit and go here. And you see how it just looks so different. And if I were going to do that, I will say that I think... Where did that little doily go? I was considering doing that... And putting this in here to bring out more of the, oh, <laughs> I've already stuck that down. Um, to bring out a little bit more of the, um, ay, ay, where are my little scissors? To bring out a little bit more of the purple, uh, of the flirty flamingo. Grab my scissors here and see. If we want to try it with this, what do we think about that color change? I think I'm going to do it just to kind of show a difference, to, just, to, um, just to kind of change things up a little bit. I do like to change things up. You see how this one's really, really showcasing the purple, and this one, I'm kind of going after the pink. So I think I'm going to just do it. I'm sure somebody's going to weigh in. But, you know, there's a little bit of a lag time. So when you guys um, put a comment on the Facebook thing, and I would love to hear your comments, um, it takes a few seconds. Well, I say a few, sometimes like 20 or 30 seconds before I see it. Um, there's one other thing I was going to do, and that is that... I wanted to put my little piece of ribbon across there. I'm still gonna go with this, but I like when you're having really textural, kind of thick ribbon like this, um, I like to attach it with um, mini glue dots on the back because it's it really keeps it secure. And I don't want this flying off. Just do like so. Nobody's weighing in and telling me any opinions yet. So you guys are usually, you know, pretty good about voicing your opinions, <laughs> which I like. So there, or is that too much pink? There. Gosh, I almost like that better. I almost think it's too much if I put the 
Flirty Flamingo card base. You guys tell me what you're thinking while I'm stamping the little tag that's going to go on here. Tell me what you're liking better. There's kind of your choices. Terry Lynn, I'm glad you're here. Okay, now I have somewhere, I have a little piece, here we go, of Purple Posy. I did want to show you that one of the challenges that we can sometimes encounter when we have these um, photopolymer stamps is they're so pliable that when you go to stick it down, it ends up being kind of wonky. And um, so then when you go to stamp it, you go to cut it out of the, of the uh, punch and it doesn't fit. So these are really, really pliable. And what I find is the best thing to do, you can either line it up on the punch, but I think what's even easier is to line it up on the stamp case or on the little sleeves, which go inside here and I can't seem to locate at the moment. Um, but you see how you can take your stamp and line it up so that it's actual, the, this is the um, actual stamped image is right here on the stamp case. And then once you get it where you want it, you can just kind of press a little bit and it, because it's photopolymer, it will really, really stick. Um, and then that way, when you go to punch it out, because the punch, oh, I'm not within the camera sight. Uh, with, then when you go to punch it out, it's going to actually fit the punch because this fits the punch exactly. So now I'm going to grab my stamp like so, sticky, sticky, and I'm going to use my uh, Highland Heather ink which is right here. And there are some beautiful sayings in this um, stamp set, and they're very versatile. Of course, this is the stamp set I can't seem to locate at the moment. I'm sure I'll find it as soon as I go off camera. Um, but the one I chose for today is wishing you the best. Because then inside, I can put happy birthday. I mean, actually, this card is so pretty. I could even, you know, say congratulations for somebody's wedding. Um, wishing you the best. So there's my little tag. And now I'm going to take my Label Me Lovely punch and line it up like so. And now, now my stitching is really lined up well. And I learned that because I was stamping this and going to punch it out and um, it wasn't working. It wasn't fitting. And I was like, what happened? Thank you, Terry Lynn. Thank you for the vote of confidence on my wonky stamp. There we go. It's a tight fit. There we go. Okay. Now I am going to put this down with a couple of dimensionals and because I'm going to have it float right over this um, this piece of ribbon. I'm just going to put a dimensional at the top and the bottom. So because I can't seem to find anything in front of me today, <laughs> I had dimensionals. I brought them over here and now I don't seem to be able to find them. See, on the days that I do Tuesday at 2 and Darlene is here, she just comes over here and just magnificently just steps in. But you know what? Here are some mini dimensionals right here on my workspace. So I will just use a few of these and I'll put three of them right across the top and then three of them right across the bottom. Again, I don't need any here because the ribbon is already providing lift. So I don't need any additional lift. And this is actually going to help me to have um, even lift so that my little tag is not sagging anywhere. So no votes on Flirty Flamingo or Highland Heather Base, huh? Usually somebody will tell me what they think is best. I think putting that Flirty Flamingo, I really like the look of that. It needs to stay down a little better. I really do like the look of that other doily there. I think that's a really cool look. 
picking up this color here. So now I'm either going to go here, which I think is where I'm going to go, or I could go here, which I think is maybe a little bit too much flirty flamingo. Highland Heather. Yeah, thank you, Mary. I thought so too. Now, the last little touch that I'm going to do, and I will stick that down, is I am going to put a white panel on the inside because I think it just finishes it. Even though I could write easily on here, I think it just kind of finishes it off to have that in there. I think it's a really pretty look. If I could find the stamp set, I'd probably stamp something on the inside, but you know, I can't find the stamp set. Like I said, when I clean up and I'm done, I'm sure it will appear rather quickly. And I know that y'all know exactly what I'm talking about when you can't find something to save your life on your work surface. But as soon as you start to clean up, it magically appears. It's always, always amazing. So here we go. For those of you who are interested, I know Mary's going to be there. I have a free stamp class on the second Wednesday of each month, and it is tomorrow, my sip and stamp. We meet at the um, Garden Tea Lounge right up here at Craftique Mall. Really fun little spot, and everything is supplied, including adhesives, absolutely everything to make one pretty card. And um, I still have room for a couple more. So if you would like to join us, let me know. Um, this actually in the event section here on um, my Sweet Stamper Facebook page, but you could also just comment here. Now, on my original, I used some pearls, and I'll show you why. But, you know, these are the silver pearls, but they, to me, it's just kind of detracting from that. And I even looked at, these are the in-color faceted dots, and these match that purple posy matches perfectly. And even that terracotta tile, I think kind of gives some nice contrast, but I felt like it just kind of competed with everything else. And the pearl kind of brings out the white a little bit. And I thought it was just that perfect little touch. Just a little something here to finish it off. And that's it. Wishing you the best really simple and you know these um these papers this is the flowering foils paper free with a 50 dollars order through the end of this month and then if you like this stamp set which is my mystery stamp set and I, oh well here's that here's the cover there's no there's actually two full stamp sets inside here that's why um that's why this is free with a 100 dollars order so you get all of these flowers that layer into these flowers that coordinate with two different punches. And this I Miss Your Face is a cute one. Again, sending your grandkids, sending friends, hubbies that are deployed, all kinds, sons and nephews that are deployed, all kinds of people that you could send those to. And this one, again, you have these cute, sweet little flowers. And then there's the fill-in stamp so that if you don't want to have to marker it or color it in, you can just fill it in with the stamp. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. The um, PDF tutorial will be on my sweetstamper.com blog um, probably tomorrow. I try to get it over there the next day. And um, in the meantime, while you're waiting for that to post, I encourage you to go look at the second release celebration items, and that includes the flowering foils paper that I used today and also the tags and bloom stamp set that I used today. So I would encourage you to go have a look there. And uh, thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you enjoyed my cards. If you have not yet um, joined my email list, you will want to do that, and I will put the link here in the title for my um, Tuesday at 2 video today. So you'll want to uh, join my email list so that you don't miss out on anything that I am sharing. You know, there's one more thing. I'm going to flip the camera down really quick because I'm going to forget if I don't do this. I'm going to show you one more thing. I meant to show you this and I got busy and forgot. I'm working on the PDF tutorial for this. This is a class that I taught at my retreat. This was an add-on class and it was so much fun. This is actually a travel journal. Hey, Crystal. And... Um, 
This is something really outside of what I normally do, but this is thick, um, this is thick whisper white cardstock, so it's really heavy and then covered with designer paper. So the people who took this class all got a half a pack of the designer paper to make this up. And then um, we had all kinds of little fun doodads. So this actually has three different dividers in it and then paper that you can record things, uh, write things out, um, journal, all kinds of different things. You could use, I'm actually going to be using mine as a prayer journal. And, um, and I'm probably going to put the date here. I put my name here in the front and I'm probably going to put 2020 in here. And I, it might say like March to July or something like that, or March to September. Um, and what my plan is to make this section, my thanks section, my gratitude section. And then this section would be my, um, my requests. This is the people, uh, the things I'm praying for, the different people I'm praying for. I've got a little clip up here. Um, and that would help me to mark which page I'm on for the prayer requests. And then my last section would be, and I have, I'll put a little title here, would be for answered prayer. And so that would be in here. Because to me, answered prayer is different from gratitude. I can be grateful for all kinds of things. Um, but ans answered prayer, I think, is a key thing to put in a journal because it helps to build our faith. You know, sometimes um, life is happening and we're down in the dumps and feeling really badly. And if I go back and look at answered prayer, it really builds my faith and encourages me and lifts me up. So I am working on the PDF tutorial for this um, and considering um, running this class again, we put a little anchor here. Um, well, people had a choice of what they wanted to do, but to me, this is like, you know, Jesus is the anchor of my soul. So that was a good use for that. And then we've got the little elastic. You make a little binding here. It was a super fun project. Again, way outside my comfort zone, something I've never normally done, something I have not done before and uh, had a really good response to the class and it was a lot of fun. So more details to follow on the little travel journal. So, um, you could use this for travels, but I'm going to use it as a prayer journal. That's it for today. Take care. Check out the PDF tutorial for today's card at sweetstamper.com and have a great day. Thanks so much for listening. Take care and God